welcome to my channel this is dr k this is the gyne talks i hope you have subscribed to this channel like click share share to your friends all your classmates everyone your family your sister your brother your mother and tell them that dr k is talking so please join me as i discuss today's topic which is so important and it's about what's going on down there oh no girls 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 have you had this experience where you've gone to the bathroom and you just don't like what you see you don't like what you smell you just don't like how that discharge looks mm-hmm sounds familiar so many people have gone through it so you're not alone i know there's so many questions you might want to ask why is this vaginal discharge white why is this one too much why is it red why is it green you know different colors and why gosh why is it smelling that way so let's break it down from the beginning what's normal vaginal discharge now you remember take it back a bit to when you were very very young and you were just about to start your period there was just that something that would come out a little bit before your period starts now that's a normal discharge a normal discharge should not be foul smelling it should be it can be white or it can be clear and it should not be foul smelling that's a normal discharge the amount should be moderate not too much in a way that you have to wear a pad now that's normal discharge in your cycle, you usually have some changes in your normal discharge. Assuming you're just about to have your period, there's usually little to almost no discharge. After your period, you'll have a bit of brownish reddish discharge. After that, you're going to have white discharge, but not too much. And it's going to be like not too slimy or it's just going to be very moderate. Look at the time when you're ovulating. That time you're going to have clear clear discharge and then it will it will be a bit sticky like you can be able to like literally pull it and that's called the spin bucket sign very big word but it's a sign of ovulation for those ones who really need to know when they are ovulating after that it becomes a bit whitish again and then it clears as if it's going to end and then you have your period now that's a normal 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 discharge Let's talk about the abnormal ones because these are the ones you'd be like i need to call a gynecologist or i need to really talk to somebody or there's just something wrong and you want to talk to your partner or you want to talk to somebody about it because it doesn't stay very well with you and you can smell it and you're uncomfortable sometimes it's too much you might have to wear your pad so what colors are a problem let's start with the white one the white one could be normal but when it becomes too much or when it becomes thick and heavy and it looks like uh, cottage cheese or just maziwalala you know all know how maziwalala looks like that those blotches of white that is candida infection that's classic candida infection could be associated with a bit of itching um, and sometimes might change from white to have a tinge of yellow so if you have that that is a very very common uh, infection it's usually by a fungus and it is also called thrush or candida those are the two other names we use as doctors and it is very easily treatable sometimes we tell you to change your diet you're able to to eat healthy vegetables and fruits uh, we will tell you to reduce your sugar intake and then if you have any immunocompromise in terms of a disease that is reducing your immunity we usually uh, tell you to to manage that problem like if you're diabetic you're going to probably have a bit of candidiasis if you're not controlling your sugars very well uh, if you also have things like HIV any immunocompromised state sometimes if you use this um, uh, steroid uh, medication that will reduce your immunity you might develop candida not just down there but also in the esophagus that's where you swallow so that is candida very very common but very treatable as well some people get recurrent candidiasis those ones you might need to keep you for on um medication for a bit longer than other people so there's a test we usually do for all these things but i'll talk about it after this um if you have too much of your normal discharge that could be a physiological 
problem not a physi physiological means that's a normal thing if you're pregnant if you're pregnant you might have a bit more discharge than what you're used to so that is expected it's called leukocoria big words but small issues um now when i move to the other colors these ones now you really 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 need to be careful about if your discharge has turned color from white to yellow green then that means you have a bacterial infection which could be or associated with uh, sexually transmitted infections uh, of common uh, we usually uh, have one called trichomonas vaginalis which may present as yellow green discharge very very false smelling fishy odor not good so you will need medication yes it's treatable the earlier you treat it the better if you have a purulent discharge that one looks like pus that also is an infection which could also be a sexually transmitted infection also treatable so you also need to have that one checked and sometimes when it comes to some sexually transmitted infections you might not present with any discharge at all especially when you're talking about chlamydia and gonorrhea so the lack of discharge does not mean you do not have that infection this is why we talk about protection especially when you're having intercourse use protection then another one if you have gray discharge gray discharge that one is by something called bacterial vaginosis. It's very, very common as well. It presents as that gray discharge could be a lot in amount. And then there's this really, really, really bad and foul smelling thing you feel. Uh, it smells, it can be so bad to the extent that you feel like something is rotting or something is smelling like it's going bad. Um, and this might not necessarily sometimes you say that it could be sexually transmitted but it could be because you have changed the pH of your vaginal environment how do you do this when you clean yourself with things like um, antibacterial soaps if you use douches if you insert things in your vagina if you keep things for too long like your tampons and all that you might change the pH of that environment when you change that then you change the balance of the bacteria and all those we call them uh, flora in your vagina and that means then you have an overgrowth of what is causing you to have that bacterial vaginosis it's very common and sometimes because you over clean yourself uh, because you're using those chemicals and all you now cause bacterial vaginosis then you clean further and then it's a vicious cycle so you must use the normal perennial hygiene which i will discuss in our other videos coming up and bacterial vaginosis is a big topic that i really really want to talk to you about because there's just so much products out there that you really need to understand and not uh, just put anything inside there because you might be causing worse problems for yourself then if your discharge is brown or reddish it means you could be bleeding from somewhere that is if it's not after your period after your period brown discharge could be normal because it's clearing out the old blood but after that you're going if you have in between brown or reddish discharge that means it could be some bleeding somewhere either because you have um, an infection in your cervix or in your vagina you have a vaginitis that can cause a bit of inflammation and then your discharge now looks reddish or brownish or if you have something foreign you forgot your tampon right in there that could also present with the same discharge sometimes could be very very false smelling if you have left something we call it a foreign object then that is something also you need to get checked very very soon so different vaginal discharge gives you different um reasons why you should be treated for one thing or another but when you come to a gynecologist and really ladies see a gynecologist get a gynecologist let them be your friend you really really need to talk to a gynecologist whenever you have an issue when you have any abnormal discharge out of the ordinary let them know they will do a test for you to be taken to the lab we will test and see under a microscope and see whether we can see any issue with it we will check the ph in the case of bacterial vaginosis and sometimes we test that those bacteria that we find we test them with medication and see which one works best for that but especially when you have recurrent problem with vaginal discharge 
then after that once we get the problem then we treat it accordingly sometimes your doctor might give you medication even before after you tested so that you can treat as you wait for the results um, it's very important that after you've been treated for any vaginal discharge syndrome any problem with your discharge that you should go back and get that test done after the treatment to see whether you have cleared all your problem um, so it doesn't mean that you have any issue when you have uh, any discharge but if it has changed you definitely need to see a gynecologist for that we will talk about bacterial virginosis we'll talk about chlamydia and gonorrhea because they have sometimes long-lasting effects if not treated early especially the sexually transmitted infections but the number one and two is chlamydia and gonorrhea we need to discuss that and let's talk about this please comment down below let's talk um tell me if this video has helped you talk to me i will be able to respond to you have a nice time <music>